So let's go ahead and set up this landscape material, or at least take it a little bit further. We're not going to plug in all the bells and whistles yet, but I have added a few more slots and renamed everything. So now I have jagged rock, rock cliffs, rock surface, beach gravel, and soil sand, and those are based off of what the materials are going to be called. And uh, let's see, so we've got soil sand, that's going to be down at the bottom. So let's see, there's soil sand, so I'm just going to grab the albedo and plug it into base color. So I'm going to repeat this step for all of the other ones. I mean, honestly, we could actually probably do the normal map. And then we're going to need to do another texture graph to unify these two because we've got ORM over here and height over here. And this channel is totally useless and we don't want to do another texture fetch on the, uh, on the GPU. So we're going to combine these two images by plugging this data into this channel. We'll look at that in a, in a couple of minutes. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these plugged in and then we'll apply the masks and see how it looks. So one moment. All right, so here, all of those textures are plugged in. Now I haven't set up the UVs when you're dealing with the landscape. There are several ways to do it, but it should still get the color. So we, we should be able to see the breakup a little bit. So let's go to the landscape section. Now I still have blue, green, and red. So I'm actually gonna go find where they live. I'm going to delete them. And then we can clear up these old layer info nodes. We'll just do a force delete. It's okay. Click this icon to discover the new layers. And there they all are. And once again, I've got to go through and add new weight blended layer info objects here. That is now complete. I'm going to go ahead and save these and we can go to manage. We'll enable all of the masks and oops, not that one. So before I plug these in, really all I'm thinking about is the sand one. I want to make sure and probably beach gravel. I want to make sure these are using this stuff in the middle where it's lighter because that is where our sand is. So let's just go ahead and we'll make a little bit of space so I can see which one I just used. Okay, so output four is taken, and then the rest of these, we can just kind of mix and match. And then for this one, we'll use output three. All right. So as predicted, the, the tiling, the, the UVs are, are completely dysfunctional, currently not set up at all. Looks like we're still doing some shadery stuff. But we're getting a nice, somewhat random, somewhat not random application of these different layers of our landscape material. So now we need to go ahead and figure out how to fix the tiling so that it doesn't look like that. Before I jump into this, I want to give credit where credit is due. I first saw a version of this technique from Ben Cloward. He has an excellent YouTube channel covering a variety of very useful material techniques. I recommend check it out. In order to keep this as easy to follow as possible, I'm going to just clean up the tiling on one landscape layer, and then we'll create a material function and apply that to the other ones. So with the default settings, I'm just going to create a new landscape here in an empty level. This landscape is 505 by 505. Let's go ahead and create a new material. Call it M tiling demo. We can open it up, set use material attributes, grab a landscape layer blend, and we're going to add one landscape layer, call it tiling demo, and we will add a make material attributes node. And I'm going to use this one as my as my test. So we can just drag that in and plug it into the base color. This should look familiar. For the UVs, actually, I'll go ahead and save this real quick. We'll create a material instance. And 
and then apply this to our landscape. Go over to paint, grab that layer, add a layer info object, wait blended, you can save it wherever it wants to save it. And here we can see if we zoom way in, we're getting lots and lots and lots of this thing on repeat. So there's a couple of ways we can add a starting UV configuration. I'm going to do a landscape layer chords and we'll pipe that into UVs. So this is going to get UVs from the landscape object itself and plug that in as the UVs for our texture sample. And what I need to do is come back and look at the resolution. It's 505 by 505. And then in the landscape layer chords node, if I have it selected, here in mapping scale, if I type in 505, what we're going to get is basically a zero to one application of this texture on the landscape object. So I'm going to hold the M key and left mouse button to add a multiply node. So we're going to go ahead and multiply this by a parameter. I'm going to right click and promote to parameter. We're going to call this one tiling A for now. And if I set this to two, you'll see now we have uh, two by two tiles. And if I set this to like, I don't know, 150, and then drop the character down. 150 is probably st still too much, but anyway, you get the idea, right? Like we can see very clearly that there is a, a significant amount of tiling here. So let's go ahead and fix this. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our texture sample. And let's just give ourselves a bit of space on this side there. So what we're getting out of here is an X and a Y or a U and a V coordinate. We need to basically flip them. And what's going to happen is this texture is going to rotate 90 degrees as a result. So I'm going to pull off of this node and type in swizzle. And you can see I've got an XYZ input or an XY input. And out of it, I can either pipe out this YXC or this YX. So what I want is to flip the X and the Y like this. And when I do, hopefully it's somewhat clear. We're getting a little bit of a flip thing here. Now, obviously we're, we're scaling it a bit. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but right. Okay. So now we need to blend these two together. And to do that, we're going to use a LERP node or a linear interpolate. We're going to take the output from our first texture sample and pipe it into the A input of, of the LERP node and the output of the second texture sample and put that into the B. What this alpha is going to be is the blend. So if we pipe in a pixel that has an alpha, an alpha value of zero, we're going to be outputting the pixel value from the A input. And if the pixel value of our alpha is closer to one, it's going to be more B and it's going to kind of blend between the two, right? So what we're going to need to do is grab a noise texture, which I have created in painter. We take a look at it real quick. I will make this available. There should be a download link or something in the description below. So anyway, this is uh, just a few procedural noises out of painter. This is the one that we're going to use. We want it mostly black, mostly white, nice and patchy, fairly high contrast. And then these are just some other, some other options that I don't know if this is useful in some other context. I figured what the heck we've got the channels. We may as well use them. So let's go ahead and head back over here. And we're going to need to use basically the same general UV scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And then this will be what we use as our alpha. So what are we looking at here? If I take this data and plug it into base color, so we can see what the mask, whoops, I don't actually want all of it. I just want the green channel. So we can see what this mask looks like in the world. That's what we get. So anywhere that it's black, we're going to be pulling from the default, the non-rotated texture. And anywhere that it's white, we're going to be pulling from this texture. So if I update it like this and hit save, let it do its thing. Whoops. Once again, grab the wrong texture out of there. Let me try that. So again, we just want the green channel, not, not RGB. 
But this is the result now. It's looking a little bit better. Let me slow my camera down a bit. All right, still some pretty significant tiling. So what we want to do is we want to actually modify the UVs for this texture and modify the UVs for this texture so they're, they're different from what's going on with the default here. So we're going to create a constant, convert it to a parameter, and call this one tiling B. Hold the M key, left mouse button. And for this one, we were doing 150 above. Uh, for, for the uh, tiling A, we can do something not too far off, maybe 175. And then this is what we're going to plug in over here. And we can take a look at what that looks like. So let's look at the instance real quick, our MI tiling demo, because it'll be a little bit easier to see the updates in real time. So if this is set to 150, this is the result. But if I change it, you can see how we're just moving that, that tiling value inside of the spaces where the B version, the flipped version is being piped through, right? And so we can get some really nice break up there. Now to take this to the next level, we can actually do something similar. Let's add another parameter. I'm just gonna start with a constant rather than hunting and pecking. And then we can just convert this to a parameter. I think it's like S and a left mouse button click. Yeah, uh, but then it adds a bunch of S's. So I don't know how much time that actually saves. All right, so we're gonna rename this to mask tiling and we'll set this at like 200. Add a multiply node, grab our landscape layer coordinates and pipe this into UVs. You can go ahead and save it. And so now I've got this extra parameter and if I modify this a little bit, you can see that what we're doing is we are actually changing the scale of our mask breakup. So we get a lot of control just by adding these extra tiling parameters. Oh, whoops, sorry. Let me actually I'll set this to 175. I was playing with the wrong one. We've got a mask tiling. All right, so it may not be super obvious like exactly what's happening here, but hopefully the, the previous example of when I, when I modified the mask, it's not too much of a mystery. All right, we can just go ahead and plug this into base color. We'll save it. So again, what this mask value is, is how we are blending between the two inputs, the regular size texture and the flip texture. And you can see if this value gets a little lower, those sections get larger. So we can maybe see what that looks like, right? Okay, so already the tiling is looking way better. In the next video, we're gonna look at a thing that we need to do for the normal map and then we can kind of move on probably assembling either assembling a material function or jumping into another texture graph example which was going to be necessary to fix the the fact that the displacement is not embedded by default in our ORM version of this texture so all right going to be cool stick around